It was a pretty back and forth game till around the 10 minute mark and change in the fourth quarter. They started to pull away. Just what, what changed in that part of the game for you guys? Yeah, give them a lot of credit. Their defense took a, a step up and uh, we couldn't produce on the offensive end of the floor. Uh, so what do we have? 15, 16 points in the fourth. Uh, give them a lot of credit for uh, really challenging every shot of ours and uh, making every shot tough for us. Talks about having Ben play with force on every possession. Do you, do you look at the 13 assists and the, the nine rebounds as a plus, or you know him going scoreless with only three shots on a night where you need kind of everyone to step up offensively is, is more of the, the issue? Yeah, I think it's uh, both ends of the floor. And so uh, whether that is a box out, uh, whether that is um, getting to the rim more, uh, I think it fits all in that category. So love the... Uh, you know, contributions with the assist piece of it, uh, continue to challenge him, continue to challenge the group to continue to uh, hit first. Coach, what did you, what was the concerted game plan against Tatum? It looked like you guys did a pretty good job of keeping him in check, but on the flip side of that, five of the guys on Boston got into double figures. I knew that was a, a sticking point for you pregame. Just what did you see with how the defense on Tatum turned into other guys getting opportunities? Yeah, concerted effort. You know, it's like football. You can't take away the pass game, the run game, and the special teams. And so we decided to really give uh, Tatum different bodies, different look, make it difficult for him, especially with Brown not playing. You give credit to those dudes for uh, making shots. Uh, they're bigs, uh, putbacks being at the rim. And then you give credit where we shouldn't allow credit to be given, where Pritchard, Hauser, Cornell, get offensive rebounds. Those are things you can take care of. So that has nothing to do with Tatum. That has nothing to do with the game plan. That is a want and keeping dudes off the, off the glass. What, what did you make of the way the team played? Obviously, a lot was made of this being the first game without Kevin. What did you make of the way the team played without him today? Yeah, I love that we got 34 threes up. I don't like that we were 12 for 32 from mid-range. So that piece of it we talked about, that's just inefficient. Uh, with Kevin taking 32 mid-range, we can roll with that. But the other guys, that's not the basket that we want to, to fit in. Uh, we take 10 more threes or 15 more threes, I love it. Uh, but those shots are inefficient. You end up being 12 for 32. That's why you have 16 points in the fourth. Jacques, to follow up on Ben, you mentioned all the things and the categories he did well. Do you think you can win during this stretch without Kevin if he's not giving you anything from a scoring standpoint? Yeah, because I look at it, Nick, as more than the scoring piece. I, I thought, uh, you know, I always look at what is the possession render. And so I think he got guys shots throughout the course of the night. My, my thing is going to be on the defensive end with Ben. Uh, the impact that he has to have without Kevin being on the floor. We're asking Nick to do a lot, be at the rim, to protect the rim. Uh, Ben's got to protect the rim. Ben's got to be able to be a force for us on the defense and on the floor uh, so that we can play small, play three guards out there so we can have shooting around. So we got to be more up to having force on the defensive end of the floor, uh, and then hopefully we can make some shots. That'll help. Jacques, you had said when Kevin went down that you didn't want Kyrie to feel like he had to take more of a burden on with his absence. Just I think he had more than half the shot attempts in the fourth quarter. Did you feel like he was forcing any of those and then he was kind of doing what you, you were hoping he wouldn't? I think overall, you know, we're going to go to Kai, especially in the fourth, because we know he can get a shot. Uh, Marcus Smart is a, a pretty good defender, and they got guys at the rim uh, when Kai got to the rim. Uh, I think he had some looks that uh, he, I've seen him make before. Uh, so totally trust his ability to make shots for us, but, but make the right decision at the end of the game also. Coach, you guys did a good job of converting missed shots into buckets on the opposite end. Uh, that slowed up in the fourth quarter. What did the Celtics do differently in terms of their adjustment to, uh, to fix that? Well, they took care of the basketball, and, and they got shots. I think we tried to scramble a little bit more than we've done in the past uh, with our group. So overall, that was good to see. Uh, but that's multiple efforts. And so uh, we talked about this to our group is we hopefully give you every avenue to play extremely hard. Uh, I'm taking that on my responsibility that you got juice come into the game. Now you got to play with that juice. It's going to be multiple efforts. That's just where we are. Got to accept that. Coach, I'm, I'm wondering if how you sort of view the pluses and minuses of the switching. Say when you have ta you have Simmons, an elite, you know, perimeter defender and you have him on Tatum. Even when he's playing the five, you know, you had, I think, Watanabe playing uh, Rob Williams in that. But he, you're switching so often that he gets switched off of T Tatum fairly easily. So how do you sort of measure the, the, the pluses, pluses and minuses of that where you're, you're, you have a great defender, but he's getting switched off of, of their best player? You know, so easily. Yeah, John, good to see you. I think overall, you think the course of the game. So we did a little bit of both tonight. Okay, usually we just straight up switch and then Ben would be on different guys. Uh, a lot of times throughout the course of the night, we fought through screens and we stayed square on the basketball. So he was able to guard Tatum and we had Nick at the rim off of Grant Williams. So there's going to be a... Um 
some adjustments that are made throughout the course of the game where he's going to stay on that guy. We double teamed a little bit, so we tried to give Tatum different looks tonight. But being started on him and being on him as much as possible was goal number one tonight. Then when we got to our switching package, it was to not be on Grant Williams and allow Nick to roam at the rim. Then when we uh, felt that wasn't enough, then we double teamed a little bit tonight. So saw all three. What Points and possessions of the game, I can't point those out to you, but he was able to guard Tatum, and he'll be able to get, guard the best dude on a nightly basis. You got it.